Greetings adventurers, and welcome back to our tale of trials and triumphs. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, your guide through the realms of magic and mystery through Basil Zan and the Betrayer's Rise. But first, a recap of the previous session brought to us by Ortega. Seemed everybody was at odds that I wanted to lead the group into the next room. Kind of thankful that I already had my back, but if everyone seems cranky about me leading the way, well, I'll just go back to sticking at the back, I think. We entered the room in the betrayer's eyes. I paid no attention to the mural stories that were on the walls. I'm from the Feywild, so I really have no idea what history is here. But Tati made a whole lot of sense out of it. She's seen a whole story about some calamity thousands of years ago. She recognized these two gods, the Moonweaver and Avandra, that Ragbeer fellow's god. I'm really impressed with Tati these days. She's really seemed to be able to pull her weight around the group. Ari doesn't mention it to the group, but he spent a lot of time looking at a figure of a man who looked like that one statue back in town. It's kind of weird. Then all of a sudden, these oozy mouths from back in town came out of the walls. I pummeled them to shit, burnt my arm with my own sword, and then we kind of carried on to the next group. And, uh... Well, we started looking around that room, too. Ari touched something he shouldn't have. Kind of fell on the ground. Oh, I forgot that one part about the raven. Parrish seems to have this raven following him. And from the vibes that Ari was getting, he really doesn't want to talk to whoever that raven is. And back to that Ari dying thing, that sucked. Today, our heroes, Lady Tatiana, Ortega, Parrish, and Captain Talus gather in mourning for their fallen companion, Ari. Potentially unable to move forward, they might spend this episode in quiet reflection, burdened with grief and memories of battles won and lost. Join us as we stand beside our heroes in their time of need, honoring the memory of Ari and sharing in their sorrow. And though the road ahead may seem uncertain, may the bonds of friendship that unite them serve as a beacon of hope. For even in the darkest of times, a glimmer of hope remains, lighting the way to new beginnings. Um, you guys are currently standing around the lifeless body of Ari. I'm going to throw the empty potion bottle, like, very angrily, because I, one, wasted it because it didn't work. Not that I wasted it on, on Ari. It was a good tent. But I'm I'm mad that it didn't work. I'm mad that I wasted a potion that we couldn't use. And I'm just going to start pacing the room, looking for... Any sort of like indication on what the, like what just happened? Why he's on the ground? Ortega holding on to Ara's body is uh, is gonna start standing up. And as he starts standing up, he is going to swell and grow and grow as he grabs Ari's body by the, by the collar on the back of his neck and is basically going to shove him into Parrish. You're a cleric. Bring him back. Um, how hard do you shove him into Parrish? <laughs> I mean, he's 14 foot tall. He probably doesn't, like, intentionally, like, shove you back into the wall. He does. But, but he does. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, he, 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 he's shoving a body into you. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just shoving Ari's body into you. Yeah. Uh, Parrish will kind of, like, stumble back, possibly nearly to seated and get up and there's probably a different feeling coming off Parrish now. Ortega's a pretty observant guy and with a very steady and level tone, he stands to his feet and says, Ortega, I do not have time, energy, nor patience to deal with your emotions right now for you. If you cannot provide any aid in this moment, get out of my way. Set him down here. Ortega will set him down and he's going to walk away and he's just going to kind of take a big breath and he'll shrink back down to his normal size as he's going to glare at Talus as he walks by, give her the cold shoulder as he goes and paces around the other side of the room waiting for Parrish to fix it. Provided no other actions from other party members. Parish would like to cast a few spells. First one first is he will give a ring from his bell and cast Graceful Repass over Ari's body. Worst case scenario, it buys them time. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then he will begin the ritual of revivify. And Kyle, we've never used this spell before. I have spell components enough for one casting and one third level spell left. Do you have any special rules involved? In this situation, uh, no. You can certainly try to cast revivify. Yeah. All right. I hate when you say try. Parish will go through the rituals that he knows um, and he will open his tome of names and he will write the name he knows down of Ari and he will attempt to strike it out while sprinkling the diamond dust over the flames. (laughs) So as you finish the final moments of the spell, the diamond dust turns into smoke as the You've done this ritual a few times before. You know that the smoke will typically go into the mouth of whomever you're trying to potentially revive. With Ari's mouth open, you see the smoke start to weave close to the body, as usual. But as the smoke gets close to Ari's face, it starts to get sucked into the vase. The vase starts to glow, and then it shatters. You, for all intents and purposes, did not successfully cast Revivify on Ari. Something was controlling or had some higher power over his body. It's at this point you see that same raven as it lands on the other side of Ari from you and you see the soul of Ari start to rise ever so slightly as this raven starts to take shape of a familiar Shatter Kai as everyone around you notices that this is going on. You, see, you all see the the drow figure start to take shape. Sorry, the Shatter Kai figure start to take shape as Ari's spirit is lifting up. You all see it is this bright bluish hue of a tiefling and almost in like a mimicry like a like a kenku style mimicry you hear it speak and the noise that comes out of it is that of a female which is odd because this is a male shutter guy and you hear all around you as this spectral shutter kai speaks to perish You have failed me time and time again, my child. This is to be your penance. You told us that you would take care of these folk, and you failed. You failed countless time. Parrish will allow the thaumaturgy that normally guises his eyes and complexion to fall, blackening and becoming pale. All emotion drains out of him, almost as if he had used Blessing of the Raven Queen that muted all of his color, except just in his affect. My queen, I believed if I had served you wrong, you would have given me some sign. And I don't believe I failed you. If it was wrong to intervene wherever I had or chosen not to, I thought you trusted trusted in my diligence and judgment enough. And if not, I would only say that I may only succeed where you let me. And you, as emotion starts to swell up and build back into him. And in that case, you have failed both me and so many others in this plane. So what do you come here to speak? At any point on this journey, you could have intervened, but you choose now, when there is a fallen one before me who I wish to save. Why? It is because of your love for that plane that your diligence and your servitude faltered. We have been trying to find you, once realizing that you were no longer performing your role. You have failed me. I have no care for the material plane. I've never had care for the material plane. I simply wish to bring everyone into the next world. 
my world, and you have actively gone against me in preventing that when it was their fate to do so. You fell in love. I know it's fate. It's something ephemeral, something that you say they have some hand in. Then why do they sometimes live such short, tragic lives? Why do beautiful songs go unfinished or ugly ones? Why are there missing seats at dinner tables? I've lived lifetimes here, and I've seen too many fallen for the sake of your fate. So, what if I refuse? If you refuse, we will take this soul that lies fallen before you, and we will take those of them around you as well. We will leave you here alone, or you can choose to obey, and we will take only him and yourself. You come to this bargaining table, holding all the cards, every chip stacked in your pile, and you ask me what choice I make. Is this your fate? I will give you everything that is yours. Everything you have had a hand in making, because to the core of my being, to the marrow of my bones, I still love you, and I still adore you, and I still wish to serve you. But you should know there are parts of my heart that you have never touched since I came here. I have changed, and the best parts of me were from that. You owe us this life. I have paid the due, and he was taken before his time. Give us at least that, and you can have your diligent servant back. But I warn you that there will still be what remains. So are you saying that if I spare this soul and I do not ferry it along, you will come willingly? Yes, and I'm also warning you that where you try to take us both whole cloth, there are parts of me that would rebel against your faith, your fate. I would rot it from the inside out for the small joys and the songs. And the supper's not yet had of those who I don't think should have been taken. So take the diligent servant that you came here for. Leave what's left and leave Ari and the rest. Your love for this world has made you weak, perish, but... If you are willingly giving me what I want, I suppose this soul can stay at least for some time until, well, you all join me in the end. Oh, that you think you're leaving the weakest part of me. What you're leaving behind is nothing but arms and the kindness of strangers and the love for this world. And I will show you that a part can be greater than the whole. And he will go willing with it. So the Shadar Kai. Actually, wait. Oh. Uh, may I ask one further thing from my queen? A chance to say goodbye. I will give you until the time my servant is done the ritual. But until that time, this soul stays here. Okay. Has time been frozen? I have questions as a player. Um, we can freeze. Okay. Yeah. Meta time. What? What's up? <laughs> as a person <laughs> now i just want everyone to know that this conversation would have been held in under common oh no <laughs> so the three of you act how could you do that to me no clue what was no idea <laughs> all right no yeah good no i'm so happy none of you are aware that you're meant to be emotionally devastated <laughs> all i see is like crying parish and drained color and i'm going like looking back and forth looking at talus going like what the like this bitch should we stab them <laughs> Stab anyone. Bang bang. Um, you you are given a moment to um, kind of step back. You, uh, you you see that the Shadar Kai servant in front of you sort of starts to prepare the ritual. You've seen this ritual a gajillion times before. You do know how long you have, and it's about about a minute, maybe about yeah, a minute and a half, two minutes. Perfect. All right, I'll start a timer. When I start talking, I'll hit it. Uh, Parrish steps back, looks to the party and says, Ari is coming back. Everything will be okay. Let me speak. I do not have much time. Ortega, you are incredibly strong. You are incredibly brave. No matter how large, intelligent, or strong you are, you will always be afraid, and that is okay. Captain Talus, no matter what you do, 
It can be forgiven or it can be fixed. Never be afraid to give orders, especially if it's just to tell people to do what they know best. Lady Tatiana, I have no notes. You are an incredibly strong woman. I don't understand you, and it scares me a little bit, but you are so confident, and you have an incredible presence. The only thing that I would ask is use my shield well, protect them, and if you can, be kind where you're able. I'm sorry. Tell Ari to please finish the song, and I'm sorry that there's not more time. Ortega's Paris, already it- rushed up to grab Parrish by his scruff and say, you're not going anywhere. I don't know what you just did, but you're not going anywhere. And that's time. As soon as Ortega basically finishes saying what he says, <clears throat> You see Parrish start to take on that bluish hue as you see Parrish's soul start to leave his body. You see his complexion instantly fade. He goes like gray. He he almost appears very soulless, almost like a husk. You see his whole entire body just kind of flunk down like there's nothing in his body. And as this soul kind of spins around, you see Ari's soul spin around uh, they kind of conjoin their souls a little bit together for a moment and you know go back to the bodies for one last moment and in that time you see a, maybe a bit of art kind of in a way communicate with the soul of Parrish as Ari's soul returns to his body and Parrish's goes to the Shadar Kai that is now a raven again in his spectral blue out, you know, spectral blue hues as the husk of Parrish's body flunks down Ari. Oh, it's, it's probably in Ortega's hands because yeah, he grabbed him yeah, by the scroll. Like, it flunks down. If it's like, limp. <laughs> completely <laughs> lifeless as Ari. Ortega is going to look over at the, uh, as, go ahead, Kyle. I'll, I'll jump in after. As Ari takes a breath once again and the raven disappears. <laughs> you died. Uh, you're one lucky son of a bitch, that's what. As he throws Parrish's body at your feet. This was his handy work. He gave himself for you, you stupid idiot. And he's just going to go off and sit in a corner. Probably I'm going to walk up and... Eight, uh, go ahead. Just place my hand on Ari. It's not your fault. Don't let him make it happen. See what what happened? I was worth such a bad reason. I don't know what you did, but you collapsed. And I tried to shove a potion down your throat. He tried to revive you. Do you have another potion? I do have another one, yes. I don't think it'll work, Ari. After he tried to bring you back, a raven showed up. And a spectral image of a shadow kai. They were talking. I don't understand anything they said. But then Parrish started saying goodbye. And... He told you to finish your song. He wants you to finish your song. He's not Ari coming back. just falls to his knees and he kind of starts, he holds Parrish's body and he, he rocks a little bit and you can hear him saying, again, not again, not again, not again. Again, again. Talus is going to walk quickly out of the room back in the direction that we came from and as soon as she believes that she's out of earshot she's just going to whisper Saigon's name under her breath quietly murmuring it over and over and over again like a ritual um as you kind of storm out of the room Ortega is gonna probably mean to mutter to himself, but it probably is loud enough. Yeah, that's right, run away. And then he's gonna get up. He's gonna look at Ari. The fuck happened? 
we went from being capable, more than capable, to not in an instant. I have no answers for you. I inspected and I struggled against them. Of course, I wish I had just let take me. <laughs> All I know is that Raven bitch is going to be at the top of my kill list whenever I fucking find her. I refuse to accept this. Not again. What do you mean, not again? You can't refuse to accept it, Ari. It's already happened. <laughs> Bring him with us. We find a way. Bring his soul back. We find a way to You know who we serve, right? We appease her. We offer her something else. I it's think she got what she do. wanted. I'm not leaving him here. I'm not leaving him here either. But refusing to accept this looks like that. And he points to the doorway. <laughs> As you point to the doorway, I need you and Ari and, well, Tatiana to make a perception check for me, please. Ooh, natural 18. With the plus, that's 11. 21. Ortega's not looking at the doorway. <laughs> So as some of you look to where he was pointing, you notice that the, the door was closed behind you. However, Talus is not in the room with you. Talus, as you were whispering Saigon under your breath, not paying attention, just heading towards the door, you felt yourself open the door, but you find yourself in a open area with a large singular dead tree off to your left you see the skeletal remains of thousands of undead skeletons all in various states of decrepitness you see a dock that you're standing on with a singular boat moored and all around you is this dark water sort of similar to what you've seen when you were um, at the camp. This is not the camp. You are not familiar with where you are. And you see in in your peripheral along this entire area is a wall of black out beyond the water that is surrounding this tiny island with this large tree. (laughs) And directly in front of you, you see a very old, decrepit, rotted cottage with the door open, and you hear a familiar voice. Come, Talus. I said you would be here. It looks like your circumstances expedited our visit. I will walk as quickly as I can towards the voice. As you get to the cottage door, it's wide open. You see a light on in the window to your right, but it's odd as you pass the threshold of the door, the frame, you look inside and you don't see there's a light at all. Instead, you walk into shadow as you take sight of the source of this voice. And it is not the character that you have come to know as your friend, Saigon. Instead, you see her in her true form. You see this large entity with piercing light cyan colored eyes, almost with a light yellow undertone as they peer down into your every being. You see almost as if it resembles a swamp hag, if the swamp hag was crossed with a shadow fiend of nightmares. It's a shadow encompassed, lanky, with long appendages, shadow tendrils swirling behind her as she, you can't make out a figure, but you can tell that there's a figure in the shadow as she and her her eye contact comes down to your level as if she's bending over to see you. I am sorry to hear about your friend. I did tell you, did I not, not to get too close? What is it? I just thought that you could help me. That's what we do, we help each other. I can help. I can do more for you. And how do you propose I help? No, you are smarter than I am. You're more clever than I am. You're so much more powerful. I have to be able to do something. You 
You could save him. You could you could do something. I'll do whatever you want. I'll do anything to get him back. Why don't you take a look at yourself while you're here? As you, like, as she says that, you look down at your hands and you see, as you look up, you see almost a reflection in Saigon's face as if a mirror has appeared. And you see that while you are in this realm, you resemble how you looked when Saigon found you. While you are here with me, this is who you are. Your beauty is the gift that I gave you originally. If you wanted me to help your parish, you'd have to be willing to give up some of that beauty. Is that something that you could do? I won't take away your powers, but a part of my gift to you would have to go to him. If you make it back, what happens? I can't. I can't. I can't be like how I was. I can't go back to that. If you're worried about your weakness, fear not. I will not take that back. I simply wish to take the beauty that I've given you and give it to perish. You would remain as you are, just simply your looks would change. Take it. Beauty is worth more to perish than it is to me. Very well. And don't worry, dear. You will have a chance to gain it back. This is just the only way that I can do things temporarily. We have ourselves a deal. Yes, it's a deal. You're just like someone else I know. Why don't you take a look outside once more as you leave? Look to the dark. Tell me whether you see a kobold or a genasi. And as you exit the door, you turn around and you look at the dock and you see a spectral image of a Janassi female with light blue skin, bluish hair, wielding a bow. And as you turn around once more to tell Saigon what you see, the other members of the party see you appear into the doorway once again, but not as you looked before. Do you want to tell them what you look like now? Ah. <sighs> I don't know if I even know what Dallas looks like. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I think, uh, <laughs> I, th I think the way that I imagine it, Talus is like, there's something wrong about her. It's like, like something diseased has settled within her and it's like she's rotting from the inside out and you can see it in like the pallor of her skin and the way that it just doesn't sit quite right like she could just fall apart and everything is frail and as if you could touch her and she would just dissolve i uh instantly pull out a gun and just and like level it for a second speaking the hell are you what have you done with talus it's um i'm it's fine and everything is just spoke to a friend and everything what is kind going of deal to be did okay you just strike? i'm just parish is going to be okay and it's six. tatiana make a history it's going to be deal. fine <laughs> Anyone. You recall a story from a certain group of people about a deal like this happening once before. Oh, she definitely made a deal. Titi, the last time we spoke about deals was in your cabin. It's an agreement. It's... That's what a deal is, an agreement between two parties. Just moving everybody to be on the same page, that's all that it is. I have had enough to hear with mysterious powers that are telling me and others who lives, who dies, who changes. You said that Parrish is going to be okay. I looked down to Parrish in my arms. What's his status? Parrish still looks gray, still looks... I mean, the, the, he still looks 
soulless. But you do see the bluish hue as his eyes start to glow again. Holy shit. Hey, 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 hey there, hey. And I'm like, I'm, sh- I'm shaking him. I'm like, like, gently, carefully, and, um, or he's holding him close and, uh, and, and looking at, looking at his eyes and just gently, like, he's shaking him, though. He's, he's trying to rouse him. Am I successful at all? The first breath Parrish takes is one not for sustenance, but for language. And an undercommon says, and I'm aware no one can speak it, my queen, where, where is my love? Skittering towards the surface and just stares like blankly at you. Snap out of it, darling. You're breathing. What? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, you seem a little, seem a little off. You seem a little, little not all there. But I mean, I don't know. Doc, I think it was pretty scary for me too. Uh, I look over at Tatiana, and uh, sorry, I look over at um, Lady Talis and her new form. Okay. Seeing her frailty there, and um, you see tears welling in Ari's eyes, and he just says, "Thank you, Captain." <laughs> Say what you will, but the captain who sacrifices for a crew is uh, that's what makes a captain. And so I go back to Parrish and I start to bring him up. Like, has any, is he still, like, what's, uh, is he able to stand? I think helping him to his feet, he will stand as he lets his mace that held uh, the bell and the holy symbol of his god in his hand fall and it clangs to the ground and breaks ringing for the last time. (laughs) He'll set common since you're all speaking it. What is this place? Do you remember anything, Parrish? I... I remember things. As he kind of like loses the thread and starts looking around again. I remember you. I think I saw you play once. How did we get here? Ari's heart thinks of it. When they've played together and they've, you know, they've journeyed together, and so there's clearly something wrong. But he doesn't want to like. Parish, darling, what's the last thing you remember? I don't. I remember tap rooms and cart rides for years and years. I remember making food and I remember terrible battles and I remember burying people I don't remember I, I've been alive for a long time why don't okay, I remember speed more? it up a little bit do you remember searching for ragbeer do you remember meeting us by a statue I remember do you remember trying to save getting me? into fight he doesn't remember any of it those who were rebelling against her I remember your faces. Get you caught up on the rest. Are you hurt? No, I I feel rather good. Good. Uh, It's hurt. It's been a long day of that, Erish, apparently. I fell and you (laughs) saved me. And from what we can tell, from what I can tell, Alice, Alice saved you. All right, well, first things first, so yes, let's lock off the open corridor so we can rest. I think that's the best thing you've said all day, Ortega. And then I think we need to sort our shit out as a group. Uh-huh. Lay every card on the damn table. Every secret, every nook, every cranny. <laughs> Because it seems we all have secrets to hide. I don't think I have very many. Think You're I the least of my ever. concern right now. Right now I'm just I, glad that everyone's drawing breath. I appreciate everything you've done in your lifetime, Parrish. Sometimes it was probably unnecessary for you to do what you did, but you did it anyway, and it takes a certain kind of someone to do that. But for now, let's take some of these rocks over here and put them in the way of that corridor and block it off, and then we can rest, because it's been a long day. Yes. Do any of you have any word of Arshni, my love? Why do I know the Arshni? Does, it, does that just trigger Josh? 
Airly, or is 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 all everywhere? Out of character. It's a certain someone from last campaign. Yeah, turned no, 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 I'm well aware. Yeah, no, I'm well aware. <laughs> In character, we pr- I don't think any of us have any idea what that name would mean. Ari. Because that's a very, very old name. Ari, <laughs> you have memories from a certain someone, and that <laughs> rings true to you. You don't know why you know it. <laughs> But you know who this person had become. And you know that that was the Spider Queen herself, Lulf. I need you to make an insight check for me, please. Ari. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna actually throw up. a 12, and then insight for me is a plus 5. So that's 17. You look into Parrish's eyes. You realize that they are not the eyes that he once had, and you get the feeling that while you two were both in your incorporeal soul form, a part of you, a specific part of you, merged with his soul and stayed in his body. You have the feeling that the very small part of your soul, the like one quarter part of your soul has split. You still have all of these memories that he shares, but now it's less so because the part of Udvara Pak is now in a small portion of whatever parish currently is. Ortega is going to start moving rocks and make a pile in this hallway to the to the west to block it off from the rubble so that we can rest. We're about to all sit down for a good old round of what the fuck was that? Basically, I feel like Parrish's answers and questions will either be very interesting or very uninteresting. The rubble gets um, safely... So uh, it doesn't take you much to, to notice that there's a, a few, like, fire pyres um, around and you quickly nullify the darkness by creating a small fire and setting up a camp in this blanketed dusty room with a shattered skeletal vase and the most recent memories of all that's transpired and you settle for a long rest. I don't really know how I can help all of you right now but I found some cooking equipment and a lot of rations on me. And it feels like I used to know how to do most things, but I definitely know how to do this. So I'm gonna let you all figure this out for a little bit while I figure this out for a little bit. And Parrish will start preparing the meal. Ari will get up and help for a bit. And, um, yeah, no, you're, you're right about that. You've got a, a real talent when it comes to this. You might not remember, but I've, uh, I've enjoyed your cooking quite a few times. That's great. I, I remember really loving doing it. Do you want to, uh, accustomize yourself to the gear alone or an extra set of hands be helpful? I think an extra pair of hands is always helpful. Great now. Uh, a little bit of info on just, um... I remember enough to know what I don't know. I know that I know all of you. I don't know those particulars. Uh, I know I was a cleric. Are I... you still a cleric? Your bell better, your something changed. It's really hard to describe. Is there anything that you're kind of good at? Is there anything you're really good at? Is there anything that you just think of? Like, it feels like everything related to that is just carved out of me and I feel incredibly hollow so I'm cutting vegetables I know exactly what you mean cutting vegetables is perfectly appropriate course of action in moments such as these I've always said I'll help you cut we don't need to talk about it you know it goes well with good food what's that perhaps a little bit of music maybe 
I just want to drop casually that you have um, guidance on this roll because Parrish gave you the gold coin with guidance on it after trying to write it before. I will play the last song I played with Parrish. Make a performance. With guidance, the roll both at the same time. I'll be right back, guys. I've got so much RP, but I gotta so I help with Decker for a second. And a two on the guidance die. Fifteen. Oh no, wait, wait. Plus, plus my performance, which is we get plus plus five. So that's a that's uh that's a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. Guidance. Yeah. <laughs> you play the song that you had practiced that night with Parrish, which really was only a night ago. <clears throat> and you're playing it and you realize it doesn't sound the same without Parrish's help. Um, Parrish, make a, make a history check. That's a seven. You feel like you've heard the song before, but it doesn't jolt any memories, just that you like the song and you feel you know it, but you just don't know where from. That's a, that's a really wonderful song. It feels like I know it and can place it. Maybe that just speaks to how well it travels. Ari smiles and keeps playing as his heart breaks a bit. Can I do an insight? Yeah. 17. My performance was a 20. There. Do I need to roll another another performance or a deception check? Because I am not, I am trying to not sell it. He does. <coughs> You are doing a really good job at hiding your emotions, but the part of Parrish that seems to have this connection can tell that there's something not quite right. Then I will accompany it, if you don't mind. Sounds like you could use an accompaniment. Not to say a song isn't whole without all its parts. No, 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 no. I would, uh, I'd agree fully. I feel like, I felt like it's always been missing something. I rolled an 11 and for... I think I, need, I didn't click off all my skills because it definitely took performance. Um, yeah, my stats are not correct right now. Uh, so I rolled an 11. That, that should be plus four, plus three for an 18 on the veal. You, you do look through your gear and you find that you had a musical instrument. You pull it out and almost as if it was second nature to you, you're able to play along. It takes you a moment to recalibrate yourself and find a place to fit in naturally and you have to stop a couple times but it's as if your love of music never left this body after we are done our song i will address the party who is hopefully all there and say i know this is a little awkward i am sure we all know each other i don't know how fully but i just want you to know whatever has happened i am filled with nothing but love and music and beauty and i don't think whatever transpired was necessarily a bad thing now i just want to restate i don't think i am who i was and if that means you don't want me here that's fine but given the nature of our surroundings i would have very least like to finish our business and leave here safely at the very least but i would say that when you talk about people of music in that light well then there is a great deal of continuity between who he was here and who is here now i don't know about everybody else but i say he gets to absolutely stay with us you've been part of this team as far as i'm concerned you always have a home in it thank you that said also it is getting that late and there's meals to prepare I'm happy to provide the entertainment or provide some help i won't hear any more of people leaving or enough people left hard today i'm just glad that everyone's back i'm glad you're happy are that makes one of at least four of us. And with that, I would probably just start either playing or cooking. I don't know. I feel pretty happy. Good. What about you, Talos? Are you happy? <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Lily, can you hear him? I can't hear anything. I uh, have to reset it every single time. I thought it was just suspenseful pause. No, I know. I was waiting. It was really suspenseful. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, she's thinking hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we're good. Okay, say something now. Are you happy, Talos? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am 
intent. Anything you want to get off your chest, Captain? Anything specific you want to ask? I meant it when I said there were secrets in this party that needed to be... I just meant it when I said that there are secrets in this party that shouldn't be kept anymore. I fully intend to expose mine. R is going to expose his. I don't know what Tati has for ex- secrets, but I'm sure there's secrets, something. Darling. There are none. But Parrish just left us. R seems to... Uh, yeah, I don't know. He's R. He seems to... What's that, guys? Rush, rush into things. You... I've been trying to figure you out for a long time. I've been trying to figure out why everyone in the party has put you in charge. Why they're letting you be the captain when you're not a captain, are you, Talus? Why not? What makes you say that, Ortega? What are you so concerned with? Well, the only time you've ever actually tried to be the captain was on the boat when the other boat was chasing us. And really, your whole plan there was to run away. You didn't have a crew. You only had us which is very undermanned for a ship that size. And you're not exactly brimming with confidence in every situation. Case in point, Parrish here asked you, what should he do? And you went, uh, 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 help. In fairness, it seems to have all worked out okay. Parrish, if you think that Ara dying, and then you giving yourself up for him to come back, and then her clearly giving some form of herself up to some strange entity that none of us know about in order to get you back, from your god that took you with her that's kind of fucked up i'm missing some things but he's fine i might be You're missing not. a lot but i feel pretty good and captain i recognize you and parish will walk over and go to give you a hug yeah and you don't need to be, uh... our, need to be our captain but if you still want to be i'm fine with that if i still get a vote I'll put it this way. I don't care who's in charge, but for now, I'm not following Cap. I don't even think you should be the one holding the jewels, but I'm not going to make you give them up. That being said, I also don't think that Ari should be leading the group either. So I vote Nazis in charge. I'm sorry, what? Out of today, <coughs> you're the only one that's been completely capable of handling themselves. Yeah, I'm always capable of handling myself, but um, no thank you. Well, I'm not putting myself in charge. That seems a little bit high and mighty of me, so I'm not doing that. Why don't we have a unified agreement when it comes to things? Not one person in charge. We are all equal. We all have a vote. And if we cannot agree, then the idea is squashed. All right, I'm just going to quickly point out a couple of small challenges with this notion. While democracy in and of itself is generally a good idea, I overall support. There is certain times, battles being one of them, where being able to whip out the ballot box is not exactly prudent. Sometimes oh, darling, when it comes to throwing fists, I'm there 100%. Okay, good. Well, I want to make sure that, you know... That's yeah, not what I'm talking first. about. I'm talking about a group decision. If we're deciding on doing something, we all need to agree. No more falling on one person to make the decision for us. I am my own person. I have a brain. I make my decisions. I don't care what anyone else thinks. But how often have I disagreed with all of you? I have a not this very often. Is, I believe that there. I may disagree, but I don't go against the group. And it's not because Talus is saying, "Oh, let's do this." And it's not because Ortega is saying, "I think we should do this." It's because that choice makes the most sense. Do we? Well, I hear. Well, I hear what you're saying, but I think the choice that makes the most sense. I put this. I feel that Captain Talus if she wants to be captain, maintains her role. I believe that we have navigated doom and death four times that I can count and barely made it. The fact that any of us are still standing, I believe is something pretty incredible considering what we've been through. I do not see the events of today as a failing on her part. Rather, I see it as this group being incredibly willing to sacrifice for each other. That's what happened today. Today, this group came together and was willing to give up anything, and we all gave up something. Well, Call it what you will, but what we have here is a crew. What we have here is powerful. What we have here is beaten death and knocked on the doors of gods. So I say Captain Talus stays Captain Talus. I say Ortega, always- while I appreciate your objections. 
I believe she is the one best situated in these trying times to be a decisive leader in the moments where we need it. Otherwise, <laughs> we're without the round table. But when a push comes to shove and we need a captain here, one of the main things I look for in a leader is someone who steps up. She has, more than anyone, willing to take it on herself. I don't need a perfect captain, I need one who stands. I don't know she does. necessarily all of our history. I know I trust all of you. I think all of you trust each other enough. Why can't we just rely on that? Why can't we just depend on each other when push comes to shove and rely on the fact that all of us know different things and all of us will inevitably have each other's back? Does it really matter who has the orders? Does it really matter who chooses to follow them? No offense, Talus, darling. I think you're a wonderful captain, and I do love you to pieces, darling. But being captain and being leader or head of a group can be so fucking stressful. And clearly it's done something to you. Alice, you have proven to have many, many tricks up your sleeve. I'll give you that. Aris pointed out several. To me, being a leader is not just standing up, but also standing back. And some decisions you've made, I think, were jumped to too quickly. That's all. I'm not saying you can't be a captain. I'm just saying, in my opinion, you're not quite ready. But I've got your back as long as you're with us. I mean, I pick up a freaking sword from an alternate universe and carry it around. Clearly, it's done something to you. Yeah, that hand looks really busted up, man, by the way. Oh, if we had a long rest, it's back to normal now. You're having having the long rest right now. Okay. So it's not back to normal yet, but it's going to (laughs) be. Oh. Ari did something stupid. He died. mingled with God knows what and died. Parrish, you did something stupid, whether you rem- remember it or not. Okay. You I'm not saying I want to be in charge. I've never wanted to be special. in charge. I'm, I'm all for not. a democracy. I think that's better suited to our, our group goals. But I want everybody to be on the same page. But I also want people to know what they're getting into. Go on, Tati. Tell them what I told you last night. Do we want? Do we want that? I'm just <laughs> no. Don't worry, darling. I could tell this story to children and not hurt their ears. I don't know how you could do that, but okay. <laughs> well, I think Ari was kind of hinting that I was going to go into explicit detail of our night, but I'm not. I meant, going I meant to the do discussion. That today. Yes, exactly. I knew you meant the discussion. Well, I guess I couldn't tell it to children. There's a lot of killing involved, but. I don't like telling other people's stories. Don't make me do it. Oh, Ortega doesn't have any problem with telling other people's stories. What, you want the story right from me? You tell That's it fine. Well then, the story of how I became, well, it all started in my tribe back in the Feywild. I was just a simple warrior in the group, raiding party hunters mostly. Other times we'd have conflict, but it's the Fey, we get curious. I wandered off. I met a girl, and well, she rocked my world, let's put it that way, and all she ever did was talk to me. But as time went on, I never realized the spell she was pulling on me. And I ended up agreeing to something that changed my world in an instant. I didn't realize that I was giving her my undying loyalty in exchange for making me stand out amongst my peers. That's what made me bigger, faster, stronger, smarter, harder to put down. But it also left me, well, scarred with my thorns. Basically, it marked me as hers, and in the Feywild, if you're marked by a, an extremely strong Fey or an arch Fey, you are deemed unworthy by everyone else. And when I returned to my tribe, I was deemed unworthy because I'd sold my soul. So they gave me an option, penalty of death or penalty of exile. I chose exile by death, and I'm the only one standing. My entire tribe, my family, my home, it's all gone. I killed every last one of them in the hopes that my treachery would be wiped clean from that place. And then I ran because I realized that she didn't love me like I loved her. And she's an extremely powerful entity that I couldn't fight. And I'd never be able to escape my loyalty to. So I really hope that she's not looking for me. But I can't say that she's not. And I can't say that she's going to take me to be her servant again or hunt me down and slay me on the spot. Murder in the Feywild is not unheard of. Slaughtering a village, a tribe, a community, that's most definitely on the side of 
you don't do that. But we all know I get emotional sometimes, and if I don't have time to think, bad things can happen. So, Eric isn't the only one crying today. But that's my secret. That's my pain. That's my torture. So when we were back in Jago and I had Ari say shit about my family, I only told him to do it because I knew I would hit home and get the job done for what we needed. That was a different time when we were scraping by. Now we clean out crematoriums for 50 flipping gold. Ugh, I need a drink. Eric, you got any whiskey on you? Mm, that's a great question. I uh, checked the packs. I think I did pack some. I'm pretty sure you did too. Well, um, I think you normally played a game with this if you ever let us have any, but bottles are yours. Oh, Ortega's gonna pour a glass. He seems to have a glass in his pouch that he's pulled out. He hands the bottle to whoever's next to him. Talus is on my right on my screen, so I'm gonna give it to Talus. And he's just gonna pour the whiskey on the ground out of his glass. I don't expect your secrets to be anywhere near the level of mine, but I can honestly say I've got your back more than I've had my family's back. And I don't know how I can get you to not hate me, but just know I still have your back whether you hate me or not. Norteg is gonna stand up, walk away from the group a little bit, over to the wall. He's gonna take off his armor and keep a listening ear, but he's gonna lay down. <laughs> And probably sulk a little bit. What did you do to me, Lee? <laughs> uh, as I sent Josh, uh, oh, where's the gif? <laughs> when I made everyone cry. Uh. Ari stands up and he sees Ortega drink sulking. Um, and he will give him his space, uh, knowing that it's a conversation he'll pick up sooner than later. He looks over to Talus and just does it down, but kind of just puts his hand on her shoulder and says, still choose captain. Just so you know, when I call out on the field, hey, Captain, yeah, I'm uh, still talking to you. Good night. And uh, Mr. Parrish and just says, thank you for everything, more than you'll ever know. Just well, it's glad to have you back. Uh, it's the Lady Tatiana and uh, Ari goes to bed. Tati is gonna go and sit down beside Ortega, start polishing her, her sword and the shield that Parrish gave her. My mother was killed by lichens. Ortega will I was sit young. Up. I was told to go find my father. I have no idea who he was at the time. When I did find him, he was fighting with a group of people. There was a woman on the floor, a gnome with wings. I watched him promise a man power for servitude and then this man stabbed what looked like a friend uh, I then watched them kill my father I hid for days I was later found by a pallid elf named Sesta who promised to teach me more about what I was. All she wanted was power, and she thought that being my father's child, I could give it to her. It was then Benga stormed the castle, killed Sesta, and took me in. That is my story. So are you all right that I accidentally sold my soul for power? I don't think anyone should make deals. I, neither do I. Mine's already done, though. I had to make one in order to learn it. And now I see Talus doing them every day. And that's starting to drive me nuts. That's why I don't think she's ready yet. She's more than capable of being what she wants to be. She's just looking in the wrong places for the answers. I agree. I agree. If I could go back and just pick death, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It was my mistake, and hundreds perished, if not more. The worst part, it wasn't just the hunters. That's the part that eats my soul. No father should have to watch his wife or his child perish in front of them, only for them to be next. I'm going to stop talking now, because the more I talk, the more I want to hurt myself real, real bad, because I know I still got a long way to make up for what I've done. I don't know if I'll ever get there, but the day I die, I hope Parrish doesn't bring me back, because I don't deserve it. <coughs> So you thinking I took that sword for 
selfish abandon. No, I just said selfish. I just said it was stupid. It's not stupid if it's the fastest way to get you dead, but well, I don't think it can do noticed, anything to me that's gonna get me there. So I've you know, probably noticed I've grown somewhat fond of you, and you're not dying anytime soon if I can help it. And Talus may be mad at you. But she has a lot of heart. Sorry, can you yes. say that again? You went really quiet. <laughs> Alice may be mad at you, but she has a lot of heart. And yes, she is making maybe stupid decisions. Uh, they're not stupid. They're just stupid naive. Deals. But we have Parrish. We have Ari. And now if we can figure out how to get her back to well, before this. I don't think that's going to happen. Mm, I wouldn't be so sure. I've heard of something like this before. It's a punishment. She's... It's not a punishment if you're willing to give it up. <laughs> All I know is that tomorrow's a new day and right now we're in a world of hurt as a group. Oh, we are. We're not even two rooms into this building <laughs> and we're no and closer to where we're died. going. One of them came back changed. The other, I don't think has learned anything. And that's what worries me. That's why I picked you to be in charge. No, I don't do much. I don't want to be in charge either. I think that's the whole problem with this group is that nobody actually wants to be in charge except for the one that does, unfortunately, isn't ready. It's a complete clusterfuck. Oh, I'm still down for team votes on everything. That's where my vote's at. I guess we'll just play it by ear and see where it goes. I guess so. And I'm going to grab my pack and kind of fluff it up to sort of make it a pillow, <laughs> slam it on Ortega, and just like nuzzle down comfortably. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep now. You don't have to find your own corner. You know that, right? No, I, I, my pack on top of you as a pillow and I am lying down. This is my nesting. I'm going to sleep right here. Fair enough. Also, this way, if somebody comes to attack us, they'll hit you first. <laughs> Good night. So, as everyone sort of finds their area in this rather large room, Talus, you're the last one to get up and go. And as everyone falls asleep and settles in for the long rest, we're going to call it a night. As the flames of morning flicker in the hearts of our heroes, a long rest and new dawn breaks, revealing unexpected revelations and sacrifices made in the name of destiny. Ari's mysterious revival spurred by Parrish's selfless sacrifice to the Raven Queen unveils a new path fraught with uncertainty and newfound purpose. Yet in the wake of this miraculous return, questions linger. What cost did Talus pay in her transformation? And just what lies in store for Parrish, now reborn under this cloak of darkness? Join us next time as our heroes grapple with the repercussions of these fateful decisions and navigate the intricate web of fate that binds them in the betrayer's rise. Their journey teeters on the precipice of revelation, and only time will reveal the true extent of their sacrifices. I have been your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, but before we part ways, a heartfelt thank you to our listeners for embarking on this journey with us and to MAB Music for their enchanting melodies that accompany our adventures. Until next time, dear adventurers, may your courage shine bright and may the mysteries of the world continue to unfold.